Listen, before um, I get to the message today, I, I've got to talk about uh, what happened Wednesday. All right, I want to let you into my life a little bit. It is hard to be a pastor. I just need you to understand that. Um, I feel led to talk about this. Um, you, you have thoughts about this, but you're not necessarily uh, put on the spot where you're expected to say some comments. I, I don't have that luxury. And so I, I need to say some things about what happened this past week. And I need you to understand something. I never went into the ministry to be popular, all right? And in fact, any preacher who went into the ministry to be popular is not a preacher you should ever be involved with, frankly, because he's gonna compromise what needs to be said. And I'm gonna say some things here that are gonna offend some of you, and I'm fully aware of it, and, and uh, I'm just gonna plead with you to just listen to a different perspective and um, plead with you to think about something maybe different than you thought. Now, some of you might be in agreement with what I'm about to say, but I, I just wanna, I wanna, I just need to say some things, all right? First thing I need to say is, I was absolutely shocked by what I saw this past week, incredibly saddened. Uh, I, I saw things I never thought I'd see in America. I have images now in my mind that I know I will never get out of my mind. I wanna be very, very clear, lest you think otherwise, I love America. I am so grateful to God that I was born here, that I was raised here, and that I get to live here. It is not a utopia, it's not perfect. There's uh, things about it that are not good, but I, there is nowhere else I'd rather live. I wanna be crystal clear, all right? Um, I, uh, I applaud the efforts that so many people have made in the last number of years and literally now decades to make this better for everybody. And I'm doing my little part in trying to help contribute to that cause, all right? But I gotta tell you, um, well, let me put it this way. So uh, people have commented as I've been standing, I stand out front here, uh, have you lost weight? The, and the answer is yes, I've lost weight. But you, well, why? What, you know, what, and, and here's the answer, um, because I saw a picture of myself. And I'm fat. I'm, I'm like what you see me. But I don't see me that way when I look at myself in a mirror. I don't see that. What, what I see is I think what I want to see until I see a picture and I can't hide behind the picture. Folks, I saw pictures of what we've become. And we need to wake up. And, and, and we, we, need to, uh, we need to deal with this. Now, let me say this. Um, of all the things that I saw the thing that made me absolutely the saddest about what I saw was how Jesus got drug into all of that. I, I, I saw Jesus' name on, on, on flags. I saw cross, uh, a cross that was erected. I heard people's comments about Jesus. And I, I'm gonna say this very, very clearly, and this is very important you hear me. Jesus had nothing to do with what happened the other day. And what happened the other day had nothing to do with Jesus. I need you to understand that when you drag Jesus into that mess, we've convoluted now what Jesus is all about for the entire world. And I shudder now to think what the rest of the world thinks about what's going on. Now, I'm gonna say something that's very, very unpopular and it needs to be said. There is a new false religion in America. It's not a new false religion out there, but it, for us, it's, it's kind of a new thing right now. It's called nationalism, and it's, ver it's, it's literally bordering on idolatry if it's not crossed the line. Let me explain to you what nationalism is. Nationalism is when you believe that the country you live in is the most important country on the planet. Listen carefully to what I'm about to say. When that, again, people who live in America, who that's their thing, that's, fi that's fine, I, you can have that opinion. But when that starts coming into the church, it starts to change things because what it does is it subtly conveys the message that we have more right to God. We have more God. God's more for us than he's for everybody else on the planet. And how it gets couched in the language that you and I hear every day is America first. America first. Now listen, if you don't believe in Jesus, you can say America first all you want. But if you believe in Jesus, I want you to understand that's idolatry. You are placing something be before the kingdom of God. If, if we would be half as passionate about telling people about Jesus as we are about telling about our political views, we, we'd have a whole different world we're living in. <laughs> Folks, we have crossed the line. And uh, I, I'm telling you, this is incredibly disturbing. We, we're finding our identity and our ideology uh, out of our political parties. And um, we are far more committed to a political party than we are to the Savior. Now, I'm speaking generalities. I don't know where you fall on this, but I need you to understand, we gotta talk about this. 
Let me me just talk about Jesus for just a moment, okay? Let me talk about Jesus, and let me explain something. If you want to learn about Jesus, do not watch the news and listen to what they're telling you about Jesus. If you want to understand who Jesus is, you need to open your Bible, And you need to let the Bible inform you about Jesus instead of trying to get an idea of Jesus and then kind of fit it into a political scenario. Because let me tell you about the Jesus you'll discover if you open your Bible and read. The Jesus of the New Testament, he decried violence. You can't miss it if you'll just look. He, they wanted him to lead an insurrection against Rome, the governing power He refused to do, they wanted him to take up arms and fight and let's get an army and let's overwhelm. He wouldn't do that. In fact, the reason people wouldn't follow him is because he disappointed them because their values were not his values and his values wouldn't become their values. So they stopped following him. So we don't want to do this. Folks, he voluntarily laid down his life. And you know what scripture says? Like a sheep led to the slaughter, so the lamb did not open his mouth. In fight, he, he taught us things. I know it's crazy. He said, "Love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. Those who contend for peace, those will be the people who will see the kingdom of God." He, he, he said, "Literally, the only one you ought to turn your attention to is uh, is my Father. Look at Him. Take your values from Him. Put your hope and security in Him." He was so much about this stuff, they actually called him the Prince of Peace. And so many people said, what a loser. He chose to lose so that he could win. Now, does any of this sound like what you saw this past Wednesday? No, no. I, I want to say this, and I have stood here on numerous occasions, and I have said, folks, this hatred is going to get out of control. If we don't check, it's going to get out of control. I want you to understand something. I believe what we saw Wednesday was cultivated. It was planted. It was cultivated. It, it, it was brewed. It was bred. You put whatever you want to put here to culminate in what we experience. We have learned how to hate people in America who are us. We are hating us. We, we have learned to hate our neighbor who votes differently and thinks differently than we do. And we're doing this in justifying it in Jesus's name. We're hating people in Jesus's name. And I just need you to understand, Jesus is going, don't bring me into this. Don't drag my name into this. Four things I think we got to learn. Four things, words matter, words matter. Words do things when you hear them. They motivate, they embolden, they define. Words have consequences. Ideas, lesson two, ideas matter. They motivate, they embolden, they define, they have consequences. Leaders matter. Leaders have words and ideas that they use to motivate and embolden and define people. And they stir us up. Leaders need to be responsible for what they do with their voice and their ideas. And character matters, folks, it matters. Character is who you are, it's what you are, it's you. And we have forgotten this because we've just basically said, you know, character, yeah, that's like, that's not important anymore. Words, ideas, leaders, character. Now, why am I telling you all this? To tell you again where I started. If you want to understand the Jesus of the Bible, don't watch the news and get your cues about him. I am heartbroken for the compromised message that we've now sent the world. And I'm going, uh, I need to ask your forgiveness that I have not been more vocal. I know some of you hate what I just said. I know that for some of you, it might be the very last week and you decide to worship with us. And I've just got to be okay with that because I'm telling you what I believe God told me to tell you. And what you do with it, you do with it. But I need to say I'm sorry, I need to repent. I need to be more vocal when I, I've seen this thing, I've tried to say it. But folks, I think we need to repent because we have, through social media, we have bought into so much stuff that's ungodly and got along with it. And we need to lament what it has done to us. Look at the pictures, this is us. You can say we're better than this. This is who we are, take a look. We need to change the course.
to change the outcome. I'm gonna pray right now because I think that's what else we need to do. And again, I know some of you are not happy, but I need you to know we need to pray that we would turn our eyes upon God and let him be our savior. Will you pray with me? Let's pray. So God, I, I, uh, I know this is hard for all of us. Wednesday was very hard, very hard. What a picture, what an imprint, what an impression. God, may we see what we've become. Incredibly divided people who have really learned that hatred has no bounds, it has no limits, there's no restraint. You can do anything now. And we're going to reap the whirlwind of this. But if we would repent and we would change our ways, God, it was somebody who votes differently than I vote. They're, they're not a bad person. They just see things differently than I see them. People who have different values are not bad people. They have different values. God, help us to understand and see things the way you see them and give us that ability, whatever that means. And I pray for us as a church that we would be a light in a dark place. Different, but light. Pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen.